let's talk about our favorite little animated mouse for a second. And I'm pretty sure you know who I'm talking about. For myself, I have a few uh, favorite Disney moments, or more specifically in this case, a favorite Mickey Mouse moment. My mom bought us Fantasia. Me and my younger brother, we had only bugged her forever. And she got it when it came out. And we sat down on that couch in front of that CRT TV, expecting this experience of our lifetime. I can't even say what did we just watch. We might have gotten through 10, 15 minutes of it, eagerly anticipating Mickey to say something. And that's when I knew I hated musicals. But today we're not talking about Fantasia. We are talking about April's game pick from Scotty J Retro, and that is Mickey Mouse Castle of Illusions. Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse is a charming, wonderfully colorful, side-scrolling platformer. A game for anyone at any age, it was released in 1990 and as part of the second wave of games developed by Sega for the Sega Genesis. With a completion time of around 1-3 to three hours, it is a quick and fairly easy playthrough that will give you all the nostalgic feels from your childhood. As you may have guessed, you play as Mickey Mouse, and your objective is to rescue your beloved Minnie from the evil witch Miserable inside her magical castle of illusions. The game has a few options as far as runtime is concerned, and if you're looking for a shorter, more effortless playthrough, you can play the practice mode, which is three of the five levels, and you start with all five power spheres. Power spheres are basically your character's health. More spheres equal more health. The power spheres are red, but actually denote two health points. With one hit, your sphere will turn from red to blue. With a second hit, the sphere will disappear. You must find three gems, which is not difficult because the gems are found at the end of each round. Find may not be the correct term as much as award it. In normal mode, you must find five gems, play all five rounds, and start with three power spheres. Hard mode starts you with just two power spheres, and though you still need to complete just five rounds, you now need seven gems to complete the game. Continues are also affected depending on the mode. Four in practice, two in normal, and none in hard. But since I played on the Sega Genesis Mini, I had the good fortune of being able to use save states to advance the game without having to worry about dying and starting over. As with all Sega Genesis games and games of that era, the controls are very easy to master and are not complicated at all. A or B to throw an object, C to jump. Press down on your D-pad to duck, or when in the air performing a jump, press down on the D-pad to execute a butt slam. This is the move that will defeat the majority of your enemies, so keep that in mind. When in doubt, slam it out. The objects you throw, marbles, apples, candles, depending on which level you are on, will actually have to be collected and therefore are not unlimited, so use these items sparingly when needed. For those that enjoy playing to get the highest score possible, you can look for various gems and bags that will add to your base score through three score bonuses, clear, technical, and secret. Let's talk about the sprites and background. They certainly do not disappoint. Mickey is the charming sweet mouse we have come to know and love, and between performing an action with a smile on his face nonetheless, he will sway back and forth with his hands behind his back, which conjures an image of the early days Mickey whistling nonchalant on his steamboat. For that matter, all the enemies are smiling too, even Miserable. Perhaps a little sinisterly, but it's delightful little butterflies, for example, that will catch you off guard seemingly flying around in the background, they will actually hurt you. And as someone who is not a big fan of butterflies, I know I don't like those menacing creatures for good reason. Butterflies aside, each level does a wonderful job of putting a smile on your face with whimsy and a kaleidoscope of rich hues. Level four was my favorite, but we will discuss that a bit later. So as mentioned, Castle of Illusions has three to five rounds depending on the mode, and I chose to play normal mode, five rounds. The levels increase in difficulty and also have stages and a final boss at the end of each level. The first level, as you enter through the first doors of the Castle of Illusions, is the Enchanted Forest. Stage 1. Your enemies here are walking trees, mushrooms, and plants. You'll also be required to collect apples to throw to defeat enemies, but still use the slam attack when possible to conserve apples. 
This stage is a breeze and shouldn't give you much trouble at all. Stage two has a lot of holes, and if you've ever played any platform game, you know that holes equal falling to your death. Depending on the scenario, you will either jump or swing across these cavities, and luckily while swinging, falling objects cannot hurt you. Warning, when swinging across on a rope, aim for the end of the rope, as grabbing the middle of the rope will only make you fall. Stage three is one giant spider web, but don't worry if you're an arachnophobe like my husband, these spiders are so cute and easy enough to avoid or kill. You just need to go from left to right without falling, and as some of the leaves do move, just be careful. These leaves can move to take you back into the path of a spider and cost you some health points. Stage four finds the forest turning a little sinister. Well, as sinister as this game has. Ghosts and mushrooms and a few secret passages tie up the stage, leading you to the cave at the far right and your final boss, who is really quite easy. A tree stump that has two attacks, rolling, and hitting into a tree on the far right to make acorns fall. Avoid the tree stump itself by jumping and avoiding the acorns easily enough when they fall by hugging the left of the screen. You can defeat this enemy one of two ways. Jump on it when not rolling, or if you have ammo, aka apples left, throw them when he is mobile. Although with any boss, throwing objects will take twice as many than just performing the butt slam, so keep that in mind as well. At the end, collect your gem, simple and straightforward. On to level two. Level two, Toyland, has just three stages, and if the first stage seems a little too easy to move to the right and simply walk through the door, this is when the game gets a little more vertical. You are looking for a key, which is conveniently located at the very top. Some of the jumps are a little difficult, but not that bad. Avoid the toy soldiers and jack-in-the-boxes or defeat them, your choice. There are a few bonuses as well to collect, but I'll let you discover where those are. Once the key is obtained, move to stage two. Stage two is reminiscent of the very first level, but you are now using springboards to jump through the stage while trying to avoid enemies as much as possible to conserve your throwable objects. We meet a new enemy, a clown on a unicycle. Fantastic, I hate clowns too, only slightly less than butterflies, and this clown throws fireballs and his unicycle, if you succeed at knocking him off, becomes an attack. But his unicycle can also be a useful tool. If avoided by jumping over it, it will take out the enemies behind you. Oh, and jello for some reason. Spam the jump button so that you don't sink in it because sinking is not good. Let's just say that. Stage three seems a lot like stage two with one simple twist or flip. If you hit the arrow on your screen, it will flip Mickey over having you walk on the ceiling, making all your controls seem backwards and wrong. But if you can get through this level and back on the ground, the enemies are all the same and easy enough to defeat. The boss battle is a large clown who is spring propelled. It will make a few jumps then try to punch you. Just dodge these by running under it as it bounces and duck to avoid its punch. When the springboards fall down, use them to jump up on the enemy and hit him on the top of his head with your slam attack. Around five hits should do the trick. Collect your gem. Level three, the storm again has three stages and a boss battle. We are back in the same feel as the first level and I notice that the game jumps back and forth in the five levels between these two contrasts. Level one, three, and five were a little darker, but even then not really, while levels two and four were airy and more lighthearted. For that reason, I'm not going to go through each individual stage for these two levels. They do amp up the difficulty in the last two levels though, and I'll say for level three, we get the dread at water level, partially, and this level adds a puzzle element by trying to find the correct path through. You also need to run through some obstacles so that you do not perish when the bottom falls out. The boss is the most challenging you will encounter up to this point and nearly had me pulling my hair out. A massive totem pole with five sections that will have to be defeated piece by piece but luckily only take one hit per, by way of jumping on the head of a frogman creature. Avoid it as it moves across the screen, spawning a phantom trail of itself. And as you guessed it, collect your gem. And as I mentioned earlier, level four, the library, was my favorite. It was a little bit Alice in Wonderland-esque with the oversized books, big teacups, huge glass jars and apples, and I just couldn't help but picture Mickey being left a little note beside a once regular sized teacup and being instructed to drink me. 
and then shrinking into this world. The level itself was certainly challenging enough trying to find your way through while avoiding the slugs and dancing letter A's. You must jump into the teacups and swim through the tea until you reach the far right of the screen. You are respawned back at the teacup which now has a lid so that you can use it to jump from. After three stages you conclude this level by finding the second milk bottle and diving in. The boss is a fantastical candy dragon in a land filled with candy. You jump from miniature cake to miniature cake, avoiding him as he emerges from a sea of milk or maybe melted ice cream at random spots in the screen. You can beat him by throwing apples at his head or jumping and performing the butt slam on the top of his head. Once completed, the gem is attained for this round and you're on your way to the final level and boss. The final level finds you inside the castle. Finally, if only we had checked the last door, as if that were an option. You must find your way through a little maze that is guarded by knights and bats and giant bowling balls. Beware falling blocks that will drop you into the murky purple liquid, which is actually acid. Cross the bridge of skulls to complete this area into the next, which is filled with yet another water level and piranhas? Piranhas, that you can't outswim. This area is not long, it just requires again, finding the right path. Alas, we are almost at the end. We are in the machine, the cogs and inner working of Miserbell's Castle of Illusions. This level is quite tricky and can be mega frustrating. One misstep can find you falling down and having to climb your way back up through the enemies and twisting turning cogs. Pendulums to swing upon and pistons to avoid and bats. So many, many bats that I'm not even sure how this machine is even operational. The final boss is next, right? Well, yes and no. This game is five levels, but in my mind it's more like six because after defeating what kind of reminds me of Little John from Robin Hood but with a more ethnic Asian background, he can be a little tricky to beat until you figure out the strategy of avoiding his yo-yo swing. And I'm not sure it's a yo-yo he's holding, but that's kind of what it looks like. Avoid that, jump on his head, and then he will jump and repeat the whole thing, but a little bit faster each time for about eight times to defeat him. And finally, 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 we are face to face with the Wicked Witch and our poor little Minnie who is trapped in a bubble. And Miserable looks a lot like Maleficent. Now I know why apples were trying to kill us. It's all starting to make sense. Miserable is being protected by ghosts, which she will shoot at you, and eight of them will also encircle her. Each time the ghosts disappear, you get a split second to jump on her head. She herself also disappears and fades away, then reappears respawning in one of the five platforms in this final stage. However, you are really only able to attack her successfully from the three lower ones, but ideally the middle one is easiest. So wait for your ideal time. It takes six hits until she shrinks away into another Disney reference, a dwarf in an oversized costume. Sound familiar? As Mickey and Minnie dance around, finally reunite it, the dwarf no longer under Miserable's spell, decides to return you to your homeland on a swing built for two, attached to a flying broomstick. How else? They live happily ever after, the end. Or until the continuation of this series in its many sequels, spin-offs, and remakes. Thanks so much for watching guys, as always. It was a really good pick from uh, Scotty J Retro. I really enjoyed it. It was a contrast to what I had been playing recently um, from March's picks. If you've watched those, they were more in depth, more uh, challenging games, sometimes emotionally, or they were physically more challenging, but it was a nice step outside of that to take a game just that I would have kind of played from my childhood. I didn't play this specific game, but a platformer or something I'm really used to. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. It was just what I needed in what's happening in the world right now. I just needed a fun little platformer to breeze through, put a smile on my face, and it did just that. If you wanna see more of my gamer education, continue to watch throughout the year. Um, May's picks are going to come from my husband, and uh, I know he's got a few picks for me that are gonna surprise me, and we will see what he has to say next month 
or I guess at the end of this month. And until then, please like, subscribe, comment, ring the notification bell. Tell us what you guys want to see. Uh, currently, we're playing the um, Days Gone and I, I know it, it receives some heavy critique, but we're really enjoying it. I think it's because it's been fixed. A lot of the glitches have been fixed because it's it's not a brand new release, but we're really in, enjoying that and we can't wait to give some highlights for that. And we've got some other stuff coming your way. So keep on watching and until next time, game on.